What's going on engineers? We're about five videos into the Let's Run Rust series and it makes sense to kind of stop and do a small application that kind of uses everything that we've learned in those five videos. So in this video, we'll take everything we've learned and we will make a small application from it. In this case, a small calculator app. Let's just get right into it. So the first thing we have to do is initialize our project. We learned this in one of the first videos and it's simply just one command, it's cargo init. I have to specify an actual name because Rust does not allow project names to be just numbers. And in my case, I organize all of my engineer ran videos under numbers. So I specified my project name as EP. This will create us a few things, it creates us a cargo.toml file and a source directory for all our Rust files. We can verify it's working by doing cargo run, which should just output the default hello world, which we can see in our source folder under main RS and seems to be working. So the program we're gonna to make today is a calculator, very simple calculator. What we'll do is we'll take user input. Basically the user will supply a first number, a second number, and then an operation to do on those two numbers. In our case, we'll do addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So we can start an application by, you know, like welcoming the user as soon as they run it, you know, so we know how to do output, print LN, exclamation mark. Remember, this is a macro. It will output whatever is inside here, plus a new line. So we'll just put a little message here and then maybe a couple of barrier characters. The next thing is we have to take three pieces of input from the user, a number one, a number two, and an operation. So we'll need spaces to hold all these three things. So the first thing we're gonna need is let mutable num1 equals string new and as you know from previous videos this will allocate a new string to hold our number one variable in addition to num1 we also need num2 in addition to num2 we also need operation or more specifically operator now the reason num1 and num2 is a string type instead of an integer type is because we can't read things from the terminal as integer we have to read them as strings and then we can convert them to integers later now it's time to actually collect this information and click the information happens similar to other languages. What we'll do is we'll ask a question. In this case, we'll say, what is the first number? And it'll put a little space. Now note that I just did print and not print LN. That's because I want them to actually type the number at the end of this text that I'll put on the screen. I have a little bit of pre-built code here that I'm just gonna copy and paste in that I'm gonna to use to actually read from the terminal. And we'll just cover what it does real quick. It's, it's just a function called read. And then all it's gonna do is it's going to flush anything to standard out that is not already flushed to the terminal. And then it's going to use standard in to read a line and read it into the input variable. I know we didn't actually cover reading user input in, a, in the first five videos, but I needed it for this video. So I wanna just do it here. We'll definitely be covering this in a future video. So you don't have to worry about it if you don't fully understand it. But now we have it using it is quite simple. Right after the print statement, all we gotta do is use the read function and then pass a mutable reference to num1. What this will do is it'll take whatever they type in and it'll write it to the variable num1. So we have to ask the user two other things. So we could really just copy and paste this a couple times. This next thing is gonna be, instead of the first number, it's gonna be the second number. So we'll ask them for their second number. And then the last one is going to be, what operation would you like to do? and then we specify operator here. We could take a moment now to run our program just to make sure everything's working as we expected. So it's building, it says, what is the first number? Put a 12, it's the second number, put like a six. What operation would you like to do? We'll do subtraction and then the program exits just like we expected to do. We could put one bit of debugging output here. We can do print ln, then we can specify the first one, second one, third one num1, num2, and operator. What this will do is this will actually print out all of these three values into the terminal. That way we can verify that they are actually being stored. So we'll do one, two, and multiply. And you can see it does one, two, and multiply. Now the reason this is not consecutive and it's on new lines is because when you read input from the terminal, it keeps the new line that the user enters. I'm not stripping it out just because when we go to convert it to an integer, it's gonna discard that new line. And then for the operator, we're just gonna take the first character anyways, so it won't matter. At this point, we're gonna change num1 and num2 to a floating point type. And the reason we use floating point type is because we might have to do division, and that's gonna need a floating point type. That way we get the full precision. So remember in future videos, we could just redefine the same variable again, except in this case, it'll be an F32. And then to get the value out, to get the floating value out of the string, we do num1.trim. That'll trim the new line off the end. Then we can parse it and unwrap it. For number two, we just make a copy and replace it to a two. For the operator, it's gonna be similar. We do let operator. In this case, we just want one character out of that. And to get that, we have to do operator. We do trim like we did before. We do chars to 
convert it to a character array. We do next to get the first value of it, basically go to the next value, and then we can unwrap that. So now that we have num1 and num2 as floating point values, we have our operator as a single character. It's worth checking to make sure that the operator they supplied is one of the four that's allowed. Now, ordinarily, I would do this by taking that character and I would just make sure that it is in like a vector of characters. But since we haven't covered vectors in the previous five videos, I'm just going to use a standard string. So I'll do let operations or rather operators equals string from and that will specify each one that it could be add, subtract, multiply and divide. Fortunately, strings contain a contains method, which allows us to check to see if a character is in a string. So we can simply do if operators.contains operator. And then if it does not contain, we can do something here. So in this case, we'll just print a message called unknown operator. And because the program can't really continue at this point, of course it can't, it can't do anything to those two numbers if it's not one of those four operators, we'd have to just return. So let's go ahead and test our program just to make sure everything's still working before we continue. We see if we specify a one, a two, and a plus, then everything is fine. But if we do one, two, and a five, which is not an operator, then it says unknown operator. So great, it's working fine. So now it's time to calculate the result of our operation. And for this, we can do something like result, and then we're gonna use our, we're gonna use pattern matching. And we're gonna match the actual operator that's supplied. So the way matching works is we specify the pattern on the left side and then a fat arrow and then what it should do on the right side. So in this case, if it is a plus, we do fat arrow and then we can return num1 plus num2. Now notice I did single quotes here and not double quotes. And that's because this is a character literal. So we can duplicate this line four more times and then we can do it up as you expect. Put these other operators here, then change them here. That should be it. So you notice we do have an error here. It's complaining because remember match has to be exhausted. We have to cover every possible pattern. So we need to cover all other values besides those four. But the thing is, is we've already checked to see if it's gonna be one of those four operators. So if it got to this point, that would be highly unusual. It might be a corruption in a program. So at this point, we can simply just panic and then say error in operator. Basically, as long as this did its job, then this should never be hit anyways. And then we can just give a nice little output. And I thought we would do something like the result of you know num1 operator num2 equals result. And then we can just specify all those. So num1 operator num2 result. Now recall how string formatting works. If you use curly braces, then you can specify a argument after to be inserted into those curly braces and it goes in order. So that's why we have one, two, three, four, and then we have one, two, three, four variables to put in there. Our program should be done, so we can come over here and test it. So we'll do first number is a four, second number is a five, and we will do addition. The result of four plus five equals nine. Looks like it's working. Let's try division just to make sure we get decimal points. So we'll do four, five, so we'll do division this time, and we get 0.8. Let's do a little more tricky division. So we'll do like 3.1 divided by 6.7. And we get 0.46268657. It does appear our program is working. The one thing that would be cool for us to add is for it to just you know loop over to the top again. That way you don't have to keep restarting the program. So to do this, it's quite easy. All we'll really do is we'll just take everything we've done here and we'll just put it in a loop. So we can start the loop there. And at the bottom here, we can put the ending loop. And then we can bring all of this indented in. The only thing we'll need to change here is instead of a return here, we'll end up needing to do a continue. And that's because we don't want to actually return and kill the program. We just want it to go back to the beginning of the loop to start over. For anybody watching this video who will download the code after the video, a good exercise here is to refactor this. So if the operator is invalid, it just loops over and asks them for a new operator at that moment. That way they don't have to re-put you know, both numbers in as well. So that's something you can do if you wanna to try to make this program a little more useful. So now we have our loop in place, we should be good to go. We should be able to just use this pretty much nonstop. So one, two, addition. And then now it's gonna ask us again, what is the first number, four or five? you know, subtraction, eight, eight, multiplication, you know, 12, four, division. 
And that's it for our program. Everything's working as we expect. Let's just recap what we did here. So we started by printing like a little welcome thing, and then we created three places for everything that the user would input. We asked the user a question and collected that input three times, once for number one, number two, and an operator. For the numbers, we trimmed and parsed them into a floating point value. For the operator, we took the first character in the string. That way we just had just the operator. We created a kind of a whitelist for operators, and then we checked to make sure that the supplied operator was inside the whitelisted operators. We used matching to determine what operator that they selected, and then we returned the proper combination of the two numbers, and then the operator, and then we output the result. If you have any questions or comments about anything you saw in this video, make sure you put them down below in the comments. And other than that, I hope to see you in the next video. Take care.